I just checked into the greatest hotel in the world. I'm back in Wyoming. I'm at the Occidental Hotel. Tomorrow I am going to hike to Fireball Peak. Uh, it took me 16 hours to get here. I'm jet lagged. I want to sleep, but uh, there is going to be live music downstairs, uh, some kind of show going on, and let's just start blogging from the get-go, even though um, I would like to go to bed. Now, I rented the suite. It is called the Bordello Suite. It has three bedrooms. Oops, here we go. Now, if you follow my channel for a while, you will remember that, uh, hold on, what's this? Is this a stiletto on the radiator? Yes, it is. Um, you'll remember that I, I toured this, um, I toured this hotel before, but now with a new camera, I'm gonna try and do this hotel justice because I felt I didn't do that last time. So I'm paying $180 for the Bordello Suites. And yes, it used to be exactly what it uh, sounds like. Um, this is where women, women of the night plied their trade. And uh, I don't know which room I'm gonna apply my sleeping trade in tonight, but uh, let's pick the best bedroom, shall we? Nice. Impressive. Now, every room here is absolutely super historic. Now, even the bed sounds historic. I don't know if these are the originals, but uh, it could very well be. I love this. The sound. Well, let's see, I couldn't get this working last time now, could I? Should I? No. Anyway, I'm gonna work on this later. Let's check out the other. Oh, no, this is gonna be, hold on. The only way I can show you guys this artwork here is if I do this. So, yes, mucho approval. This was possibly the madame. More artwork, I can't. This is like, what, what, what kind of world are we living in when I can't even show you historical? Anyway, the artwork kind of speaks of what used to go on here. Again, another, who knows? So a lot of the furniture in here actually stems from back in the day. Exactly which parts here are orig original and, and which are not, I obviously don't know. But um, according to the website, a lot of the, uh, the things in here are original. Well, this was, okay, so far this is my sec, no, this is my favorite um, room. So I may be sleeping in here tonight. Just uh, let's try the bed. Oh, oh. All right, we can work with this. All right, we have a toilet. And a bath. My 
I'm gonna have to say that I prefer the second bedroom, so that's where I'm gonna sleep tonight. But every room in this hotel is unique. These are the marks of a cowboy who used the butt of his gun to hammer <laughs> on this door. Hold on, let's see if I can work this. You would open. And then you get some air coming through. And from the working woman's perspective, you could also probably you could hold a mirror up here and then you could see you could look down and uh, spy or whether the cowboy that was hammering at your door with his gun had vacated the premises or if he was still there. Now why was he standing here hammering at the door? Well his favorite fair maiden was inside and she had rejected him exactly why I don't know, maybe he was drunk, uh, there is a bar downstairs, so let's uh, head down to the bar, shall we? Because Geraldo will like a couple. Someone trying to take your seat? Oh no! He's telling me someone tried to steal his seat. And yours. <laughs> alright, alright. <laughs> so what did they do? They chased him away? I walked out my phone's right there, my beer's right there. I can have my seat back. Alright, alright. Good. Good work. <laughs> Cheers. Guys, I lied. I said I was gonna come down and have a drink. Okay, I, I did that, but it wasn't just one. It was a couple. And now they're closing up. But uh, anyway, there's the, the girl from, um, from three years ago, she's still here. Let's see if we can get her attention. She, she's all the way over at the end. Vanessa, do you have a couple of minutes? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh they, my gosh, that's a tiny camera. They, it's a new camera. Oh, wow. But, but they miss you. you. you You're one of their favorites. They miss you. Oh, well, I'm still here. Yeah, okay. You know, you guys just have to come here. So how are you doing? Good. Yeah, just enjoying Buffalo. I mean, look where I get to live. I, I kind of told them the story. You're famous now. People are asking for your autograph. Yeah, that's never happened, but um, it was kind of cool. You know? Um, 
Is this a local? Was it an American, no, a European? No, um, actually it was a, a, maybe a teenage girl. She was here with her family, but they follow you. Like, they go to the places that you put out there. Do you have, like, a whiskey? Yeah. Um, actually, our house favorite is 1792. It's a Kentucky bourbon. Can I have a look at that one? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. There you go. So what does 1792 mean? Oh gosh, I don't know. It means good whiskey. All right. It means good bourbon. Uh, let's try it. Can I have it on the rocks? Yeah, definitely. I'll be right back. All right. All right. Can you guys see how when I film in public, I entertain everyone? Even the people next to me start laughing. They're like, why is this guy talking to this black stick? <laughs> Is this, the first, is this the first time you've seen a vlogger in action? Yeah. Live? My first. I'm a seasoned vlogger. I'm a virgin vlogger. Oh, what, <laughs> what kind of vlogs do you watch? No, I've just seen people vlog. Oh, you have seen them? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you follow that famous uh, channel, like, influencers in the wild? Like, there's... There's... Oh, here we go. Hold on. Uh, here we go. All right. Yep. Give me a... Good old Do you guys want one? Right there. Do you guys want one? No, I'm good. Thank you. Do you want to have a bourbon with the... I think he does. One more, please. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to come back and see it, right? All right. All right, Derek. Cheers. <laughs> Let's see. Better than Budweiser? Better than Budweiser. <laughs> That's um, David Stewart's favorite. It's just a great bourbon. What is the most hated beer in America? Is it Budweiser or Coors Light? You know, that's, that's a touchy subject, because I like Bud Light. Bud Light's I good. like it too. But like the world famous Jeannie Briscoe is drinking Coors Light right here. The Jeannie Briscoe? Yeah, she's um, she's going to be a famous musician. You probably want to get her <laughs> Jeannie Briscoe. on your show Are you? Here. I hear you're world famous. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I'd go with world famous, but there's like four people in Buffalo that know who I am. Just All right. Yeah. Well, that's our old world. Now, now there's somebody in Norway too, and also probably like 200,000 people watching me who know who you are. Yeah. Oh, on that? Yes. Oh, hi. <laughs> I know. It's hi, everyone in Norway. <laughs> so, what do you do? Um, I do music. I'm singer songwriter. I'm doing some recording and trying to get to So, what's your band? It, I'm, it, I'm just, I'm, I'm just me. I've got a bass player. It's kind of a duo thing, and it, it's called I'm Genie Lee. Okay. All right. Are you on, are you on YouTube? Are you on? Not yet. I'm working on it. I'm getting my recordings done. Um, just getting my website finished. Getting up the PR kit and all that kind of stuff. So how can people find you? Um, for right now, it's on Facebook, and it's Genie Briscoe Music. What a night. Ah. Okay. They kind of topped me up before I left the bar. Okay. Oh man, disaster. Oh no. There is no way. There is no way. I'm trekking today. That was one barrel too much. Oh. Why is the water running? Oh. A stiletto 
cushion. How cool is that? Didn't notice that yesterday. It goes well with the... So this is what... That's what the stiletto is actually for. Like a museum. I'm not gonna tour the entire hotel again, uh, but if you're interested in that, obviously I filmed that three years ago. Uh, I'm gonna put a link to that video in the description and uh, at the end of this video. So uh, go and check it out if you wanna see more of the classic rooms here. Um, for now, I'm just gonna give you a little walk through down to the reception area and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, see if I can find something to eat. Um, but on my way there, don't you just love this old creaking wooden floor? <laughs> awesome. I guess that's how you know you're getting older when something as simple as a, an old wooden creaking floor can excite you. Anyway, let's enter Gabriel High Roller Traveler mode. Oh, an antelope. Let's soldier on. I'm gonna show you my favorite item, which uh, are these Margaret Smith's mid calf lace up boots. Man, women had style back in the day, huh? In my other video, I checked out the. Uh, the uh, I think I have both of these rooms in the other video. Creaking floors. This is probably the best, the best room in the uh, in the entire building. Morning. Morning. Oh hey, Hi. I remember you from my last video. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they want to see you again too. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm very good. Ah. Yeah, nice to see you back. Nice to see you too. Great. Did you get many people come and we say hello? We did get a few come to say hello, absolutely. All right. Your video goes viral. That's ah, wonderful. That's, that's awesome, yeah. 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 Now, now I have a new camera, so I'm thinking everything will look a bit better, you know? Right. So okay. Just doing a little walk around. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> anything anything um, new here now? It's all exactly the same? Oh, Are, there's little changes, you know, we've the, the, we done the flooring a little bit and uh, and, and things like that. I'm trying to think whether they had that floor done in the saloon, but it's supposed to, it looks just like it did originally because they cut each and every tile so it would match what the original was. Oh, right okay. Back, so, so what time do they open there again now? At two. At two. But you can go in there anytime. I can. I guess you can. All right, all right. The door open. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The privileges of walking around with the yeah, camera. So. You get access to areas other people don't. So this, hello. Yeah, so this flooring was what was, uh, every piece was cut individually and it matched what the old flooring was. All right. So, but they have the, had the uh, open mic last night. Yeah, I was and here. You were here. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Good, good. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm suffering the consequences now with oh, a massive yeah. headache. So. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, let's see. Are these, I was going to ask you, are these hunted locally? Yes. Are these from this Wyoming? This is the elk. This right. one here, and then the mule deer here, and another elk there. Yes. All right, all right. They're in the Bighorn Mountains here. Original Occidental Hotel, 
This is Roosevelt here. Oh, that's and Teddy Roosevelt. That's Teddy Roosevelt. And these are people, and here's Herbert Hoover. And these are people famous and infamous that have stayed here. Oh, so my. we've had Buffalo Bill Cody, also Calamity Jane. There's Ernest Hemingway. Buffalo Bill. Owen Wister wrote the first Western novel called The Virginian. Was he a thief? Was he Buffalo Bill? Was he a Buffalo thief or something? Like no, Buffalo <laughs> Bill Cody, he was, um, he, he was a man that put together uh, the, what they call Buffalo Bill, his show, where they had the Indians and they, and they also took it and, uh, uh, and Buffalo and they took a, like a, a display of the Indians fighting the cavalry and different things that way. Uh, and they took it over to England and Europe uh -huh. also. So he was not they an outlaw. Come. I thought Buffalo no, Bill no. was an outlaw for some reason. No, not him. All right. But Tom Horn was there. And, uh, and this is the Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. These are your outlaw groups. So what was Tom Horn into? Well, was Tom he a Horn cattle a, thief? No, no, he wasn't. But they, he had worked for some people that I think that were. And I think he got, uh, some people accused him of killing a young boy, but I think it was something that was put up. Uh, they've got some different history that's oh. saying because they, he was hired to, sh to help the, some of the cattlemen get the sheep people out of the way. And, uh, and then kind of when they were getting in trouble for that, then his job was done and they needed a way to get rid of him. So ah. there's different stories of that. So he stayed and, here as well. Uh huh. And, and here's Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid, and they're the they're the ones that uh, are the outlaws were, were train robbers and all kinds of things. And but they kind of took from the rich gave to the poor kind of a thing too. So they're kind of yeah popular in a way. Yeah, locally. popular in a way. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you this phone. Does this work? Not now. It used to. It used to because you'd to. have to do a. It, you know, crank it, and then, and then it would uh, fire it up, and then you could talk in here. Okay, so you listen here and you talk yeah, then. Yeah, uh -huh. huh. That's the way that one worked. All right. Do and you... it was part when there was party lines, and and different people had different tones of different rings. Like somebody had three rings or two rings and a short ring, and and then other people could pick up and listen to the call. So, yeah, so how did you dial here exactly? Oh, it's just was it was through an operator. This would ring. This would ring to an operator, and then the operator would pick up. Okay, and then so you you ask the operator. The operator I wanna... and then they would, yeah, where you wanted the call to go, and then they would do it from there. And I guess this would be rare. I mean, people wouldn't have these at home in the cabin. Not no. So mm -mm. hello. Who's Chris? You look shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming in there. I was like, I should clock in. Yeah, you should. I did. All right, good girl. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh, here we go. This was the map I was looking for. This is uh, where I'm at right now. So that is the old Occidental. I'm guessing here's the window I climbed in last time. And this is Buffalo. So uh, Buffalo in 1883. So a tiny, tiny village. Oh, wow, everywhere you look, that's just... Is this a saw? Anyway, I wasn't going to, to uh, do an extensive tour. Uh, All right, I'm gonna go for find some food. Is there anything open now? The Busy Bee Cafe. Busy Bee right Cafe. What do you recommend? Um, so one of our most popular things is going to be the Busy Bee Stinger. You get eggs, bacon or sausage, uh, toaster or biscuit. That's a big popular one. If you like... The BCB Stinger. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for that. It's really good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. See you guys later. Yeah. BCB Stinger. Let's roll. Oh. Da! Ah! I hate the sun. Always have. All right. The BCB Breakfast, Lunch, Dinner. Oops. All right, see you guys when I have my food. My anti hangover meal has arrived, and it looks like this. I don't know why it's called a stinger, but uh, 
Yeah. I got some water here. I got some water. Let's investigate. Under the guise of this uh, buffalo. Yeah. Or bison, as I call it. Wow, looking forward to this. Dr. Pepper. That did the trick. Feeling a little better. But uh, yeah, there's not going to be any scaling of Fireball Peak today. So I'm uh, going to go back to my room here at the Occidental and uh, probably crash in the second of my three bedrooms. And uh, yeah, tomorrow morning or, or uh, maybe later today. Fireball Peak is, I think it's at least two hours north of here. So maybe I'll head in that direction later today. But anyway, see you guys at Fireball Peak. Signing off. It is time to have another go at Fireball Peak. I am in the Tongue River Canyon and it's the middle of the winter. I'm not really dressed for winter. And last night there was a massive snowfall, but that makes for an incredibly scenic hike. I'm also obviously going to attempt to swim. Now I rate my chance at, at actually scaling Fireball Peak. It's probably 90% not going to be possible, but okay. We'll walk up there and see if it's indeed possible. Oh wow, <laughs> this is unreal. Woo! Man, I'm so excited. And I'm so lucky with all these snowfall. Marching speed! Woo, slippery already. Let's not fall and the adventure is over before it even begun. So, to the foot of Fireball Peak. I don't actually remember. It's probably at least an hour. We are here. That is Fireball Peak. Right there. It doesn't look like there's that much snow up there, but uh, that is where we're going. Exactly how? I'm gonna have to zigzag my way up here and then go around there. And that's kind of the halfway point. And then it became very treacherous. Uh, if it's possible, I don't know. I'm a little more confident now. Now here I'm kind of 50-50. Depends on how thick the ice and snow is up there. If you're wondering how cold it is, so it's been, I've been here for a couple of days. It is, uh, it was four degrees this morning. It was 10 degrees minus Celsius at night. And right now it's probably about zero, I'd say. <sighs> Wish me luck. change of plans. It is very slippery, so I'm just gonna have to vlog as far as I can go, basically. But I'm aiming right for it. As you can see there, straight up ahead, 
five ball peak. So I'm just gonna go straight up. Last time I was kind of zigzagging a bit more, but as you can see now when I'm pointing down, okay, here it's not so much snow and ice, but right under the snow, it's like often a very thin, a thin layer of ice. So yeah, Whew. let's vlog all for as long as we can all. <laughs> Marching speed. All right, but you guys, now you see how I'm doing this. We're gonna get you five ball peak. All right, I'll pull up the camera because I heard like a wincing sound. If you're wondering what kind of animals they have up here, they have, they have mountain lions, obviously, feeding on the deers, and they have black bears, who if you see them are nasty, they'll feed on you. The mountain lions seems to be more like a 50-50 situation. I've met people here who have run into them. Also, I've met people here who've had their cat and dogs mauled and eaten by them. There's also rattlesnakes here. They will be in caves like this deeper caves. We're going to continue up there. We have run into a bit of a disaster situation. I don't remember if I walked around and up there or oh, I can hear the attack parrot or if I walked up here and then around. To the best of my memory there there is no path. Uh, once I go here, I don't remember going here at all. And I think that this tree and this wall, I mean, it's so scenic. I think I would have remembered if I walked here before. But anyway, I'm not keen on backtracking down because down is just going to be hell. But also I would have remembered kind of, look at this. I'm pretty sure I would have, hold on camera. I'm pretty sure. Oh fuck, I would have remembered something like this. Lean in, lean in. Hold on. Lean in. We're just talking a couple of meters. See here? It's just... We have a bit of a disaster situation. I took a wrong turn, or there's been landslides here, so this path is now much worse than before. But if you can look right here, I think that's the path I did last time. Uh, now I'm here, after balancing up through here, past this rock, and I'm kind of, I'm stuck here now at the point of no return. I'm gonna have to jump. Either crawl up here, this slippery rock face, or just kind of heave myself towards this rock uh, and kind of hope I don't slide all the way down. Yeah, I don't know what this looks like for you guys in the camera. Probably not as steep as it is. But I don't... Something must have happened here. I don't remember it being like this at all. I don't see how I'm going to go further up. Oh, man. 
cares what happened. I chose the wrong. I went, I should have gone down and tried to go around. I should have, I backtracked, basically gave up. And then I found the path I took last time. So we are on the right track. Fireball Peak is up there. I expended an F ton of energy, two wrong paths, backtracking. Gave up, but okay. We're on the path again. Well, there's no path, but we're gonna make it. I think this is the last bend. I think this is it. Now, I haven't been filming much coming up, but that the snow is so deep and thick. Hmm. And uh, these logs is making it difficult. So I'm slipping and sliding and anyway, almost there. One last push. Fireball Peak! Woo! Woo! Gotta watch out a little bit up here. And no! Attack Parrot! Oh man. We made it! Whew. And what do you do when you're on top of Fireball Peak? I think you all know. Give me a second to prepare. Did you seriously think I was going to come here without having a fireball shot? Did you? Well, if that's what you thought, you thought wrong. Cheers, my friends. Whew. Whew. Hold on, did we capture that on film? I think maybe we missed it. Luckily, so one more sip left. Balance. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. Red, white, and blue, baby. Ooh. All right. So, I'm sure I've told you guys about the antifreeze properties of pork. Naturally, I loaded up on pork chop this morning. And uh, if you think that I'm worried about hypothermia up here, ah, that is the least of my worries. Ooh. But okay, I do have one major worry. <laughs> and that is going down. It was so icy. It was, I honestly don't know how I'm gonna do it. So, all right, down we go. Maybe I'll film a little bit for you too. I mentioned it on the way up here, just about to go down now. See if you guys are watching this, I obviously made it, but, uh, yeah, it's so slippery going down, well, going up. So I can only imagine what it will be down 
Bloody will be down. Jesus. Focus! So I can only imagine what it will be like going down. Just how ridiculously slippery. Exactly how I'm going to do it. I'm probably just going to slide. I'm probably just going to slide more just uh, on my on my bum and uh, and use these logs. If you can see here, there's been a huge, I assume, fire at some stage, and all these logs are loose. Sometimes you move one log, and then they all start tumbling down. So I mean, all the way down there, that's where that bend is. Before I uh, go down. Uh, here, which it doesn't look very steep here, but believe me when I say it was. This is enough right here. I mean, I don't want to be stuck up here when it's dark. <laughs> you see? So this is this is what it's like when it's flat. Whoa. Man, this is gonna be worse than I thought. Jesus. Focus! Pious soldier. Okay, I have not moved. Just to show you how difficult it is here. So I've had four falls, but this is the first major one. You can probably see my tracks. So. I started from there, I grabbed onto a branch and I was leaning in, the branch snapped and my body just started sliding down until I stopped right here. Now I'll show you the critical thing and this is the absolute most craziest danger as I'm walking down here. Look what stopped right here. I slid and I stopped right here. So it didn't have time to dig in but Fuck me. You know, I had another one where I slipped and I landed on a, my ass landed on like a tree trunk like this, but it landed on the flat section and next to it, right next to my hand. It was a, yeah, so this is the danger here. These things like, man, if that had dug in, you know, and caused some major artery in, in my, in my thigh. I'm in trouble trying to go down here, but okay. I'm glad I'm probably going to want to go down for 30 minutes. It's taken as long. Hold on. Let me sit up and okay. Okay. It's taken me as long to go down as it did up. So but as long as I lean in and yeah, this is my longest slide though. And I, this was, was what stopped me. Anyway, you guys probably like, whoa, look at him. He's right flat where you're sitting. Believe me, it's not flat. So it's the camera playing tricks. But anyway, let's continue and find a, a place to swim. So I'm looking for a place to swim. Now this is where I involuntarily swam last time, but what I learned from that was that uh, as long as you kind of stay in here and don't and don't uh, and you're not dumb and you're out there with the current, I think this is kind of the best natural pool because it's not easy to even access the river from the path I'm on now. So let's let's go down here and, and see if we can find a spot. gonna be a tough one the problem with this is the toes and my toes are already Woo, freezing also how are we gonna get up here ah we're just gonna have to slide in here uh, Woo. Ah. Oh, 
Yep. Oh, Jesus. I'm gonna swim with a hat on. Oh. oh no, son. Why have you forsaken me? <laughs> oh. 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 Let's get out of here. Oh. I can't feel my toes. Oh. Uh, oh. uh, it's too cold. Uh, 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 hold on, are we filming? Yeah, so the problem now is a toes. Now that I'm not gonna feel, I'm not gonna be able to feel my toes for a while. I'm gonna put you guys here, and we are commando. That's right. Now it's not too bad. Once you're out of the water, no problemo. Oh, of course now, the sun's coming out. Now I could have even gone up there. What a spot. I started looking at other historic places to stay and I drove past here a couple of days ago. You may have heard of the Waldorf Astoria in um, New York. Take a look at this. Waldorf Astoria. This, uh, this place looks unreal. Let me enter Gabriel High Roller Traveler mode here. Hello? No answer. <laughs> Hold on, did we film that? This new camera, man, I am... I'm excited about this. So, okay. Occidental was fantastic. But, uh... But this looks... Let's just see. Maybe... Oh, there we go. Hey, I, I spoke to you on the phone. You must be Harold. I'm yes. Patty. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come on in. <laughs> Thank you for, for accepting me on such short notice. No problem. So is this a, a family run place or? Yes. Well, it's me. It's just you? It's just me. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Man, this looks fantastic. It is. It's very comfortable. There's so much for you to look at, so much to keep your interest. You could be here for days. All right. I'm, I'm sadly here just for one. <laughs> yeah, well, you'll have to move really quick. Cool. So you, you built all this? Oh. Well, actually, my husband was the creative one. I did all the, the uh, physical work. He's doing the mental work, I guess. But um, he was into stuff, as you can see. And it used to be a lot more crowded than this because we used to be um, a gro gourmet grocery store and we sold a lot of what I call trinkets and trash. Wow, this is unbelievable. Did you make these? or One of our I local artisans did. This is a beetle kill bar which he honed out. He made these chairs. He's actually, well, he's retired now, a mason. So he did all the flagstone floors. He added all the rock. And I'm not sure if you've had a chance to look at the front yet, but if you're familiar with Texas, you're gonna know it looks exactly like the Alamo. Really? So yes. that, that's what it's modeled on. Okay. Well, my husband doesn't seem to think that it is, but it sure is. Wow, she was right. It kind of does look like the Alamo, doesn't it? It's so is this a communal bit. area, is it? This, it's, this, was part, this was the restaurant. So you just got tired of cooking then for everyone? Is, it, well, is that why you decided to turn it into a guest house? Well, there again, when I first moved here, the population was like 600. Try finding employees. Ah, uh, see, I see. With, you know, that few of a uh, um, population. So it got to be very tiring, but I tell you, it's been 
17 years since we closed, and I still catch grief for it. Not only everybody in Story, but people in Sheridan and Buffalo, because this was the place to come to eat. It wow. was fantastic. Wow. But Do you ever think about opening again? Like No. Although, happy. since we've redone it to where it's a guest house, and we've got separate, like the old beer room, it's got bunk beds, the old wine room has a queen bed. There's separate rooms, and I don't know if you've ever been to restaurants that uh, were we're utilizing an old house and they had all those different rooms. I think it would be a perfect place to have a restaurant, but I yeah. don't want to do it. Yeah. Not now. I've done it. I've served my time. Yeah. It's not an easy thing to run either, is it? Like a restaurant no. business. No, it's it's twenty four of... hours a day, yeah. basically. Yeah. For not a lot of return. Yeah. Margins are except thin. pleasure because you're making everybody happy. Well, this was, I wish every place I checked in to give would give me a history lesson like that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm, I'm not going to waste too much of your time. I have a lot of editing to do and some work to do. Do you want to see uh, your bedroom? Yeah, I'll see my bedroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you actually have <laughs> your choice. Uh, like Am I the only one here today? Oh, yes. This is always just for one family. We would not put, because we only have the one bathroom. Oh, I see, I see. So it is only one group of people at the at same time. time. Right. Okay. So Just happens to be that I'm a very small group. Right. Okay. This was the old beer room. I thought I was just getting like a tiny room so I can hang out here and... Oh, no, you got the whole place. The oh, whole so place I'm renting a house, not a room. Wow. No, no, not a room. No, okay. No. <laughs> but this had an open ceiling and we enclosed it when we turned it into a bedroom. And this has a history. This metal, the sheet metal here. Yeah came from one of our local uh, mink farms. We had two mink farms here in the old days. And you can still see them every now and then running along the creek. They're offspring. All right. I think that's pretty interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And, My yeah. reaction was not the what you expected. I should have been, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of people that live here that don't even know about I'm sorry. So when I'm filming... Uh -huh. There's so many things that goes through my head. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like, hey, is the camera, you know, what does, you know, sound, is the angles right? And I'm looking around, you know, I want to ask you about the right questions. Because now that you're here, later on, maybe I see something. And I was like, man, I should have asked about that, you know? Yeah. Like, for example, right now, I'm looking at this. And you it's... told me about the Volkswagen fight. Yeah, and this is, is, is this kind of from that same? This is uh, from the Fetterman fight. Uh, a couple of miles from here. This is one that we did not win. All 81 servicemen were killed. Here's another one of his. And one of his charming things were that, oh, this must be our wedding picture. Because he would always put little drawings. That's and a signature? that's my husband and I on a moose, because that was our logo, a moose. All right. So that's amazing. Smart. You look very happy. Yeah. <laughs> but yes <laughs> this used to be what we call the wine room that's why you see the drapes have grapes on them and you'll see a lot of wine paraphernalia in this room but wow. um, so this is my room this is your room Woo! yep uh, so i was be... i've been at the occidental for a couple of days oh no and that amazing <sighs> but i must say you know this is like it's it's up there with the occidental this well, is unreal it's smaller than the occidentals is this a saddle you turned into a, mm -hmm. a mirror? It's the harness, yeah. And there's one in, in the bathroom like that as well. Oh, wow. There used to be even more stuff. These are always sitting outside during the summer, but I bring them in for the winter. Um, oh, wow. And people for years will put their kids in these and take pictures of them over the years. So that, okay, it's a fun, functional, man, that is the biggest rocking chair I've ever seen. And we had to make that one, and then I just recently got this one from them. A local, uh, John Lumbeck, made these. He will not make any more, but they are like one of a kind. It's kind of cute. Everything here is just... This is where the chairs are normally. I brought those wow. up from the creek. Sorry, I'm just getting distracted by by this is this is pretty cool too. Like your tree couch, whatever this is, one of the coolest couches I ever seen. It's a bench. Yeah. It's a bench. Yeah. This is the thumbnail for my video. <laughs> yeah, we always hit our heads too. You get mountain, mountain lions. Lion. Yeah. Yes, in fact, one of them ate one of my cats six months ago. Oh no. We've had five mountain lions up here this year, and I believe they that caught you've seen. one. 
I haven't, or, but other people have. I've only seen one on a video here. All right, you guys probably saw the edited version, but we've been talking now for 20, wow, 23 minutes. I'm gonna, I'm sorry to be this, uh, I must be the most difficult guest to check in ever, but. Uh, no, actually you're pretty good, so. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all right, I'll put, I'll put the details on the screen for those of you who want to come here and check it out, so. Great. All right, signing off, I'll see you. I actually don't know what my plan is. I'm gonna to go to Sheridan tomorrow, so. See you guys there. Just on my way to the shop here, uh, I missed this. I have no idea if this is an actual safe or not, but uh, yeah, it is locked. Anyway, I'll, I'll ask about this tomorrow. Um, <laughs> this is so cool. I want one of this in, in uh, well, I don't have a house, but I mean, if I did, I would install safe doors as well. What a cool place, Mint Bar. I'm in the town of Sheridan, one of the biggest towns in Wyoming. It's named after a general who fought in the Civil War on the Union side. I have come downtown here to meet, oh wow, Americans and their cars, you know, these monster trucks. It's probably gonna be louder than me, so let me um, cross the road. Jesus. Okay. The monster truck is gone. So, I am here to meet a guy who runs an antique shop. I think it is this one. I think it's it. Let's see. I am at... Luke's Antiques. What is your shop called? It's called the Old General Store Antiques and Collectibles, uh, depending upon how people dub it. But uh, just the Old General Store is the main name for it. And and this is your store. It is. Yes. Uh, how old are you? I uh, well, I'm 21. I started the store um, when I was 13. Actually, I rented the building when I was 12. And uh, before that, I, uh, I had an antique booth or a booth at an antique mall down the road. But I've been in the business uh, more or less since I was um, a small child. I started buying antiques when I was four and selling when I was eight with that antique booth. Um, and uh, so I've had this, I've been in it for about 15, 16 years. How do you come up with the idea of starting a, an antique shop? Um, I've always had an interest in antiques. Um, like I was saying, I started buying them when I was four, largely um, just for personal, uh, you know, my personal collecting. Of course, just started out with small things, but I've always held quite an affinity for um, antiques in the past, and I've um, enjoyed collecting things from a number of different eras and regions and uh, just a whole host of different What's things. What's your favorite era? Well, I, I love the late 19th and early 20th centuries um, the most when it comes to collecting stuff, but really it can be quite broad. I've got stuff dating from the 15th and 16th centuries in my personal collection, and then I've got stuff clear through the um, 1940s and 50s into some mid-century as well. Uh, largely American, but I do have um, and have had a number of European pieces over the years as well. Okay, so, so most of the stuff in here is it, from the U.S.? Largely, yes. Uh, I mean, for like instance, this, for example, this is an ancient Greek symbol. It is, yeah, um, that's the Greek key. Um, that came off of um, a Greek revival building in Chicago from the late 19th century. Um, I bought it on one of my buying trips when I was there. Um, I think it was July of last year. So that was my next question. So, I mean, how do you collect? Like, so you run an antique shop. Are you, do people come to you? Are you like scouring? markets for like and like how do you yes. find these things i find them all over um yard sales garage sales auctions uh people often contact me as well um wanting to sell things i mean for instance this bookcase here it's um articulating actually to be um it's a, called a baker's bookcase is kind of just an informal term for it but it can convert from a bookcase like this to a table to be used in a bakery or a kitchen I guess we'll have to go that way, but anyway. Oh so wow! It can be a table or. And how, how did you find this one? 
Well, uh, like I was starting to say there, um, someone just contacted me, um, I think it was on Sunday, uh, they had gotten my number off of the internet and they contacted me here locally wanting to sell it and uh, reached a price with them and brought it down here. So it's probably the, the newest addition to the store, but definitely a unique piece and oh. rather rare. All right, yeah. No, I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah, it's, it's American made probably probably from around the turn of the century, I'd say. Uh, the base is oak, and then these are um, just pine shelves, but it's definitely a unique piece. What is but... something that you are particularly, when someone buys it, you're going to be like, oh man, yeah. I, this is going to hurt me to sell. <laughs> well, I don't bring any of that stuff in here. Um, oh, you keep I that. Always, I always keep the best stuff, but there are a few pieces that I'm quite fond of. Um, I'll show you. Uh, this light right here, this is French from the 1870s. I'm missing the shade for it. I actually um, ordered one somewhat recently and I'm still waiting for it to arrive. But anyway, um, it is articulating. If you look at the top, it has that large weight in the center on those chains and you can pull it up and down, or at least originally we're able to pull it up and down to light the candles and light the oil um, font in the middle and then you could raise it back up to the ceiling so you wouldn't have to get a ladder out to, you know, light it. It would be a lot easier that way, but... Is that for sale? Oh, uh, the radio. Nope, that's one of the few pieces in here that isn't for sale, just simply because they're rather hard to come by anymore, but it's a 1930 Edison um, R6, and uh, it was originally owned by a family very close to here that had a dry goods store. Uh, they bought it in the fall of 1930, uh, and I think I'm the third owner of it. But anyway, it's been fully restored, and I run a tenth of a watt AM radio station in here. So it works? It does, yes. Um... Ah, you, you've been playing antique songs. Yeah, well, that's what I was starting <laughs> to say. I've got a, um, an AM station that I play vintage 1930s and 40s music on. See how it's got the dome on the top? Well, this one's amazing. This was more expensive at the time because... Does it open? It does, yes. Um, but it was more expensive at the time because people couldn't set other trunks on top of it in the luggage compartments of the ships. So you would have um, this trunk on the top. And, you know, of course, because you can't set something on the top. But it would keep a wealthier person's belongings safe that way. What is the priciest thing you have on sale here? Is it is it the shoes? or uh, what is No, actually, probably the Sioux jacket back there is the priciest. That's $8,500. i have had some other pieces in the past. $8,500, $8,500. 8500 Yes. So what? when is this from then? So and why is it? Hold on, I'll come back here. Yeah, it's from 1909. I apologize, it's rather dark uh, back here, but... No, this, this camera is good at... Oh, good. In the dark, yeah. So here, what, you have... It's uh, from 1909, and it's quite rare uh, to see something this large still intact. And um, what is what animal is this? You know, I really can't tell you. Uh, I used to know. It's um, I think it's been. What was I trying to say? Well, I, I can't tell you. But he'd be the one to ask on it. Your your friend who's exactly this. Yeah. yeah, I rent him this space in here, and then I keep a commission of the sales as well. Better? Forgot when I made this window display that I put some pieces up in here, but these are all native. Um, so what is this? That's nice turquoise. Um, it's a necklace, of course, but um, it's all, I'm assuming, local turquoise. Okay. It, it could be from a number of different places. And, and how this much is, is this? That one is priced at... 140. Um, that's really quite reasonable for that. That's not bad. And this is from, do you know when it's from? I'd say it's, um, it's older. I'd say I'd, ca I'd classify it as vintage, probably somewhere in the mid 20th century. Okay. And this is what's called Navajo pearls, um, the sterling silver beads. Um, that's quite common, commonly seen with uh, Native American jewelry as well. Oh, all right. But Indian made, yeah? Yeah. Everything right. in this little platter here is all um, Native American. Well, Definitely a unique piece. All right. I think we'll take this one. So what are these things? They, um, they, they're stones? turquoise stones, yes. Yeah. Um, turquoise is something that you often see with Native American jewelry. Um, okay. There's some very high-end galleries, especially in the Southwest, that sell pieces like that. But you see it all so, over the so country. How do they make this color? 
How? Well, it's it's natural. Um, it would be a so. Stone. This is a natural color of these stones. Yeah, it's a natural stone um, that's wow. often found in the western part of the U.S. The sale has been made. I'm going to send this to one of you guys who are channel members. That's right. You can now be a member of the channel, and I'm just going to pick someone and send this to you. Good morning from America's gun-friendliest state. Right, I'm at a gun auction. Um, obviously, I can't buy anything because, uh, well, I could buy, but it would be shipped. Um, and, you know, since I can't bring anything back to Europe, uh, there's no point. But I'm going to sit here and I can bid on the knives. So I just signed up. I'm number 43. Here's a, here's a list of uh, some of the things on offer. Really, really cool guns here. My favorite is this one. This one. Mini. Okay, we got a whole bunch of butcher knives in the butcher block. Okay, and uh, 10, 10, 12, 50. I'm uh, the 10 and the 12 and a half, the 12 and a half, somebody get 12, 50. There's certainly a lot of butcher knives in there. And somebody get $10 bail and somebody $10 and a half, 12 and a half. I'm uh, the 10 and the 12, 50. I'm uh, the 10, 12 and a half, 15, 15 and on the 15, 72, 250. So, $20 down the center, 102. <coughs> so fast I can't understand a word he's saying. <laughs> Folks, if you're lined up and there you go. And uh, somebody get three hundred. Ain't nobody gonna get that missing the grip. Somebody get three hundred. Ain't nobody gonna read three 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 now three. Somebody get two hundred bucks on it. Police positive oh, forty eight. No. Two hundred two and a quarter. I'm at two hundred twenty bucks. I'm right down here two hundred where you at that's two twenty five. Two hundred twenty five. Yeah. Now two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty seven to five. Two seven five seven five two seven five in the front row two fifty two seven five no. three. I'm at twenty five. I'm gonna board twenty five but in the front row everybody I'm gonna board here now four twenty five so for four hundred dollars to number ten. Four hundred dollars to number ten. Twenty-two and a half. Twenty-two and a half. So twenty dollars number seventy-seven. There's your walking stick for protection. There you go. Five hundred. Hey, everybody, five, 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 five. Somebody get two hundred bucks on it. Hey, everybody, two hundred. And two, 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 two. two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty. I'm two and a quarter over here. Two twenty-five. Fifty. Two seven. I'm giving three. Now you're out. Two seven. I'm giving three. Now three. Two seven. I'm over here. Giving three. Now three. Now three. So $275, number 145. That's right. Wyoming is ranked the number one state for guns. It's not Texas. Oh, anyway, I see some, hold on. Let me turn the camera here. I see some, uh, it's gotta be some deer up here. Anyway, so if you guys watched my videos from the US three years ago, you may remember I had a a shiner, a cut above my eye. Now, um, 
that was from shooting here in uh, Wyoming. So I'm now on my way to meet up with the guys who are uh, responsible for that China. No, I'm joking. Obviously that was my fault, but um, it was, it happened when I went shooting with these guys. So uh, let's see if we can do uh, the other eye uh, today. I'll see you when we have uh, arrived at our, um, well, it's actually, we're gonna go and shoot on public land. The cool thing about Wyoming is you can just bring your own guns and set up shop on public land and go shooting. This is it. Show you guys what this looks like before we set up camp. So it looks like there will be five of us and uh, the target we're gonna be aiming for, there will be one at uh, 300 yards and there'll be one all the way over there at the hill you see in the center that will be our thousand yard target it's going to be my job to go and uh, and set that up so uh let's get to it maybe someone can give me a ride so i don't have to walk over tonight though right no this afternoon now oh up to 15 mile an hour winds this afternoon this is, oh boy is it the 400 yards there's five, huh? Okay, one of the big red ones. Um, oh, the end this is the board. In the board? This one? Okay, on the board. I got it. So now we're looking for some uh, metal poles. That will be the target. Oh, we got three here. Huh. What the hell? Oh, I got it. wrong one, wrong play. You got the steel on the left and right. Ah, uh, let's put it on the left. So now we have the thousand yard left? Nope. This is this is the five. Two, two, four, five. We have six hundred and we have seven fifty. And thousand, the last and then one. A thousand, the last right. one. Yeah, I don't think y'all wants to shoot out to fifteen hundred today. No. Too windy? Yeah, and that's we haven't shot that in a few years. Right. It's it's a long shot. Oh, they're running away. The deer. Yep. Oh, no, those are antelopes. Antelopes. Wow. Well, that's a good move, right? Before what's about to go down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Put, put yours on the ring. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Got it. And then. So obviously when we're a thousand yards back there, the wind will have a huge uh, impact on how the bullet flies. So we need to, you look at these ones and then the spotter will kind of direct, adjust for the wind, right? And then we can't even really see if we're hit, but we'll hear it like, boing! Oh, body. Oh. I, didn't, I didn't bring it out yet. Oh. Did you know I'm easy to get along with? That long one goes up here. Oh, yeah, you are. I try. Sometimes I'm very successful. I don't care what they say about you. I think you're a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What you, do they say? You don't have to put it up, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> we like him. Okay. Or we wouldn't pick on him. That's right. Oh, you ready for 500? No. 400 is green. Uh, all of these guys are really experts at uh, at guns, and uh, just now they're they're writing down some measurements with regards to uh, the wind and uh, yeah. We'll see. I mean, it seems fairly strong. 
Now this is going to be loud, so you need these. I guess I'm not going to load them or, back uh, today. Yeah. That's over last night finding what I did find. All right. Good to go. Crazy? Yeah. Who's going to be the spotter? Oh, yeah. Left or right? Ready? Ready. Left. Went to the left of the target? Yeah. Try it again. Ooh. Bingo! Bingo! Same damn place. Same damn place. As, as the uh, projectile travels out the, out the barrel, it'll whip like this. And that's a harmonic. And that can that can throw yeah, you off. The next did, shot you take yeah, thought, can be a little bit different did, than did, that. Did, did the, uh, and it hurts your accuracy. Oh, what are the flights doing? It's probably buggy sounding. Yeah, it's right. in the bullseye. Yep. I just wanted to make sure it shoots. Right. Right so now it's getting the super left windy. Left. Uh, this is going to be a tough one. He's going to have to aim way to the left of the target. To the left of the steel. Yeah, I compensated too much. <laughs> What's that one? Okay. That's my one. We I want to have you shoot. Put it right out of three hundred wind mag. No more than that. Uh, not much recoil because it's so heavy. Yeah, it looks like a monster. Yeah, the, the chassis is 16 and a half pounds without the scope and furniture. Should be four, basically. Four should be. What's this? Muzzle brake. What does that mean? Reduce the recoil. Oh, okay. This. 30 caliber. It's a 300 wind mag. Yeah. See, and I'm shooting in this a 208 grain bullet at 2,700 feet per second. Is that because of back order? Well, I should have said before yeah. my stamping. I'm going to shoot at 250. Woo! Ho, ho, ho! The sound on that. <laughs> Boom! You want to shoot it? Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay, good one. Going? Powerful. You feel yeah, it? Yeah, you do yeah, good. good <laughs> okay, go to the thousand. We can hear the thousand. Thousand. You do it. Uh, what you? Sh that's what you should. So one mile, twenty point two. Okay. That's one mile. We're looking at here, 7.2, a thousand. So I go up. Yeah, put, yeah. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Point two. And then down. So what, what this does then, is it adjusts the scope? Mm -hmm. And now the scope is looking so that you can just use the crosshairs again, you know. Okay. If if this was a sniper, and I told you two four or something like that, you'd count down two four and pull the trigger. You know, that's what that grid is in there. So now this rifle, when we aim just straight, will will shoot higher up in an arch. The bullet mm -hmm. will go in a higher arch. Exactly. Yeah. Ready. Ready. Bingo! Got it. Yeah. yeah that's what I'm Good right. shot. That's what I'm <laughs> I need to get it. So when you adjust those <laughs> numbers according to the yeah, distance the you're firing, the what you're doing is you are you're um, adjusting your sight, I, I don't really and the sight will stay on your your like target, but you will the rifle will be we know they're not. you'll be we're aiming having, up because the bullet doesn't go straight. It it goes up and down to hit the target, especially when it's a thousand yards away. Are you ready? Good! Boom! Yeah. Nice! They make that bigger bullet. I was over at the edge of the plate. We should be back a little farther because 
Who knows what kind of shrapnel could fly back? He's going to shoot at the rock up there. Oh, I thought you were shooting at the top. No, I'm not sorry. at the no, target. going for the target. rock up there, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hey, they're hot. <laughs> they're going to the good spot, though. They are. I'm watching them land, right? <laughs> Within two yards, they're still here. Oh, yeah. Wow. Close. Amazing. <laughs> Without you moving around, you landed them all in a nice it, group here. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> wow, yeah, what a beauty. Boy. Yeah. That, that sounds so, good. So this is an, uh, right there. look at the smoke. What? This is an AR with a, with a silencer. Oh, okay. I saved this one. Here? Yeah. What? No, it was beautiful. It was really good. Yeah. All right, cool. I loved it. And it was very quiet. <laughs> you shoot it, yeah. yeah. No, that's okay. You're going to try I it? Try to, like I say, I, I wanted to go over there and see if I could hear it. Oh, I didn't. I thought you went to take a whiz. No, no. <laughs> no, he ah. to go see. I wanted to hear it. I'll tell you what, it's oh. pretty quiet right here, too. I know, but I could hear it go poof, 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 poof. Yeah. 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 yeah it really works, old. don't it? Yeah. There was a lot of smoke coming from the, the silencer. It's, it's, it's you can, warm. You can order them. Yeah, uh, that's hot. You, you still have to register. Not bad. So I was not supposed to fire them all? No, that's fine. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I wanted to listen to it. All right, I'm out here at the thousand yard mark. You can see the, uh, the car behind me. That's the, they're at the 500 yard point. So let's go and see. Now this thing wasn't painted with fresh white when we started so but it's definitely more we hit it many many times so let's have a look yeah it's impossible to tell which is ours is it yeah yep everybody is what's what's depressing is nobody hit the center <laughs> <laughs> 